The Revel Point Range Scanner. Uh, I sold my Pop 2, bought the range, because I wanted something that scans bigger objects, because that's really my goal, scanning people and props and things of that nature, and it scans larger objects faster. However, I did scan some large objects with my Pop 2 that came out pretty good, so it's not impossible to do with a Pop 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did one of them, a latex master copy of a Halloween mask, a Jason mask, but here are some scans that I've done successfully with it as well. And they came out pretty good using 5.0.8 of the RevelScan 5 software. Seems to be doing a much better job than previous versions. I'm really happy with it. These scans came out pretty good. I had a few life casts that were painted darker, like a dark gold, so I got a lot of noise when I scanned those. Using dry shampoo, I got excellent results as shown by this Jack Nicholson life cast and this Anthony Hopkins life cast. And how easy this software is for you to work depends on your system. This is mine. It's a fairly good system so I don't have any issues. Sometimes I have to wait a little bit for meshing, point cloud fusion, things of that nature. But overall I've been happy with this setup. It's been good for all my 3D modeling and everything else I do with working in 3D and video editing and such. So starting a new scan I did it with high accuracy, feature tracking, and dark object mode. I turned off color scanning. Since this was painted like a dark gold bronze color, I tried lighting it up with my light on my cell phone. Didn't seem to make any difference, but it was something to try. The scanning distance, I like to leave it between around 5 and 600. This seems to work well for me for cutting out close background objects so it doesn't scan them in and get confused. The RGB camera I put on auto because it didn't seem to make a difference when I did it on manual no matter what I set it at. And my depth camera was always on the lowest setting. This time I used three to gain to get a little bit of game. You can see there's some red in there. As I've mentioned, this one scanned fairly well. It was just too noisy, which you'll see in the end here. And I always turn on hide surfaces, almost always. If it doesn't work out, you can turn it off. After getting one, complete successful rotation. I raise the scanner up to scan from the top. This can be done fairly easily as long as you're careful. Just hold it as steady as possible. It should keep tracking. It worked for me. I let it go around one time. You don't want to over scan. Some people are under the impression that the more rotations you get basically, the more detail you'll get. But it can really cause overlaps and some weird issues. So just try to get one good rotation from each angle. So I didn't record the results of this scan to show you how noisy it was, but I did this Shatner life cast, scanned it just like it's shown here, and this is what it turned out like. The scan was overall good as far as the shape and whatnot, but this noise, it could be fixed in Blender or some other modeling software, but I didn't want to mess with it, so I went with the dry shampoo technique, which basically just consists of spraying the entire object with dry shampoo. Make sure you cover every dark spot and got this result. And right here is what I mean by covering every dark spot. That's where my fingers wiped off the dry shampoo, so it's empty. Just make sure it's all covered and you'll get a good result. Now I'm going to show you how I did the Jason Goes to Hell latex Halloween mask. We call this a master copy because it's a thick rubber pull of a design that's used to make several copy molds from for production. And these didn't need any dry shampoo because of the light tan color. Scanners work better with light colors. And this color seems to be perfect because I got no noise, smooth scans. They just came out really good. Now the way I do these, I start from the bottom and work my way all the way up to the top. You can work your way from the top to the bottom, probably doesn't matter. As for the settings, high accuracy, feature tracking, general object, don't want to use dark. I'm not doing color scanning because this is not a painted mask. I always hide surfaces and as I mentioned before, scanning distance somewhere in the 600 range to block out any background objects. Then just adjust the scanner back and forth until we get some green bars over here. It's kind of broad because of the shape of the mask. The shoulders are wider, so those will get too close as it spins around, but not too close that it won't scan, so it's not really an issue. But you can see I got the, the depth camera exposure all the way down. And as I mentioned before, the RGB exposure is always on auto because it doesn't seem to change anything for me. And then I'll start and get one complete rotation around the bottom. After the first rotation, I grab the scanner and move it downward to aim up at the undercuts. This one had a lot of undercuts. I wanted to be able to get all those scanned in. So I want to get behind those bumps on the head, especially under the chin. That's pretty much hidden if you just let the scanner shoot straight on. And again, one full rotation after pressing start. And this time I just held the scanner down below the desk aiming it up to get undercuts as best as I could. Without worrying too much about getting every little spot, the RevelScan 5 software is really good about filling in smaller holes. And I'll show you that later. 
and it fills them in so good yeah I, I don't think you can even notice them now I can pause it and raise the scanner about halfway to get the midsection adjust it accordingly Press start again and get one more rotation and just continue this way all the way up. Now before I go up any further, I just angled the camera down since all the shots were straight on from the front. This way I could get a down angle at the shoulders and anything else that had deeper cuts that I was missing from front on. And when you do something like this, this is where you can get weird overlaps. It worked out for me, but since I was scanning in an area that I had essentially scanned already, it could have led to issues, but it didn't. At this point, I essentially had all of it scanned except for the top of the head. So this is where I grabbed it, held the scanner up top, got a good distance away. So I got some green bars and then hit start and just kind of held it there until it got all the way around. And then I moved it towards the top to get the very top because that's really easy to miss. After pausing, I inspected the point cloud and I noticed some overlapping. Like I was discussing earlier, his left eye didn't look right and it wasn't. So I used the undo button to keep going back until it looked good again. It can be difficult to tell if all the bad scanning is gone. So you can zoom in on the point cloud, move it around, make sure it all looks good and you got rid of the bad scanning areas. I had to do it quite a few times to get back. It doesn't matter if you go back too far. You can always rescan and fix it. So don't be too shy here. And then I just rescan those parts at the top, just like I did earlier, to fix it. And then a second inspection in the point cloud to see how it looks. And I don't see any real issues. So now we can press complete and move on to editing. And now we see the completed point cloud. Right now it's just in the point cloud stage. I'm going to go up to edit and do a point cloud fusion under manual edit. Auto edit seems to work fine, but I like to make a finer point cloud distance. The smaller the distance, the finer the finished product basically. Hit apply and then wait. After that completes, we can take a look at it and see how it looked. And this one came out really good. You see the holes under the chin like I was talking about earlier. Really hard to get under there, but those will fix easily in the next step. First, we're gonna clean up the point cloud. Even this hole right here will be fine. You won't even notice that it was fixed by the software. So the first thing I'm gonna do under point cloud editing is uh, isolation to get rid of all this stuff. Because anything that was captured loose floating in space will be stuck here and we can get rid of it easily with isolation. I'll do it at a large distance and then a smaller distance. Press detect and all the red stuff will be deleted by hitting apply. And I'm gonna take the isolation rate down, detect again, see if it finds anything. Nothing there, so we're all right. The rest will have to be done manually with the lassos and whatnot, but first I'm gonna try the overlap detection and it doesn't find anything. Try it on low and high settings. Nothing found there, so I can move on. I'm not gonna do any smoothing because it looks really good as far as that goes already. And I'm gonna use the polygon selection tool. It makes it easier to draw a line wherever you want it. Lasso works great too, I use that a lot. Here's the lasso. You really have to be careful to draw your line using the lasso selection. It works. After it turns red, you hit the delete button to get rid of it. And for the rest, I'm, I think I'm gonna use the polygon selection tool. I'll show you how easy this works. You just basically draw point to point. You can start anywhere you want. Click, move over, click again, move, click again. Just keep moving and clicking, drawing a polygon selection, basically. 
and then draw all the way around it. Connect the ends. Turns red, hit delete. I really like this tool over the lasso tool. Now below those two tools is the clipping tool, which will allow you to do a, a flat clipping of everything below the line that you draw. I don't typically use that one, but it is useful. Now this flashing down here would be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and use the lasso right now. Even this I think would be easier with the polygon tool. I'm gonna do it with the lasso this time. Now I'll do the polygon tool. You can also add, as you can see here, to your selection. You don't have to keep doing one piece at a time. So I just have lassoed all those, it stays red. Select the polygon tool, and I'm just gonna add to the selection which is really useful. And after I've got it drawn and circled and completed. And we'll press the delete key and get rid of it again. So I've got a few more over here I wanna get rid of. So I'll continue with the polygon tool and get rid of all the rest of the flashing, make it a little bit even. And you'll notice when I get to the start point, they automatically connect. You just click once, it will enclose your polygon so that you can delete it. Now I can use the isolation tool to get rid of these extra loose floaters that seem to have appeared. And just like before, we'll just do a low detection, apply to delete those, and they're all gone. Now it's time for mesh construction. I always like to do a manual like I said before. I'll take the quality all the way up to 6. Turn off hole filling because I'm not sure if it's going to keep the curvature setting if I leave it on here. So I just do that in the next step. And that takes a few minutes, even on this machine, sometimes it'll take two or three minutes. And after it's done, we can take a look at everything and it looks good. We'll see some holes because we couldn't scan every single little part. Now we'll go to mesh editing and see the methods here. We want it uncurved. We'll hit detect. So if it's on plane, it'll fill them flat. We don't want that here. Now all the green spots are holes. We have to select every one that we want. I wish they had a select all feature here because I hate going through. Selecting every single hole. Possibly missing some. See how tiny some of these are. That one I clicked through and got the edge. I don't want the edge done, so I unclick that. And select the one that I was trying to get. Make sure to examine the entire model to get all the holes. Because it's easier to do now than later. Even in something like Blender. I think this is easier here. I think Revel Scan software does a good job. You'll hear some people say that they don't even bother that they use Mesh Mixer for all the post processing. But just look at these results. I think Revel Scan works great, and I'll continue to use it this way. After I get all the holes selected, I'll hit apply, and then we're basically finished. And then I'll have one last look around. All the holes are fixed, and you can't even tell where they were. Even this one over here that was really noticeable before we fixed it. So 
So in my opinion, Revel Point has really nailed it. A consumer price point with some really good scans. It does take some practice. You can't just plug it in and go and expect these results. I had to play around with it for a while. And it can even be frustrating at first, but keep messing around, do some research. Don't be afraid to change the settings and try again and see what happens. With all that said, all that's left to do now is export the model as an object file. And then I can do what I want with it in Blender. If I want to go straight to printer, I would have just fixed that hole on the bottom that I don't want fixed in this instance. But in order to print it, you'd have to seal it and make it manifold. I would seal that hole in the bottom and export it as an STL and be good to go. I might even use the simplification option if I was going straight to printer with this to give it a smaller polygon count. That's easier for slicers to work with. And hopefully I can find time to get some more videos up like this.